Say Dr. Modi Obutoke. I was born um, June 12, 1973. So that means this month I clock 48. Um, out of the 48 years, I grew up with my mom for just 10 years because I lost her when I was in primary school. Um, I love my primary school years. Having a father and my mother encouraging us to go to school because they are unlettered. Uh, I don't say women. My, my, my mom was selling drinks, palm wine, then later uh, with, um, he, she opened their parlor. My dad just returned from the Civil War, so he was looking for how to go a young family. So that's the family I grew up with. Uh, we ended up being seven children in the family. We lost one of them after the death of our mother in 1983. So that was the that was actually the genesis of the hardship, because you can imagine husband and wife working together to grow young family. I could see the two of them with a lot of focused life despite their social class and why they wanted us to all read and have good education. So I grew up with that young family. Uh, unfortunately, we lost um, my mother to an accident uh, which eventually uh, made us to lose also our youngest um, in the family uh, so we ended up becoming six at the end of the day that was actually the genesis of uh, hardship in the family my father could not recover from it and um, we ended up hawking <laughs> hawking sugar cane hawking a way do uh, vegetable Okay, no manner of things. I remember I've sold a calendar for somebody before, and um, there was a regular job I, I used to take up then. As a youngster, I was just, I was still less than 14 years. <laughs> I was following a man that, do, that did um, video coverage as a light boy. So I carry the light, I keep his camera, I will keep his camera. So I it was really a very hard and very difficult life where if you are looking for the face of poverty that was what it was where you cannot decide on what you are going to eat <laughs> what you are going to eat in a day talk less of tomorrow so so that was how i moved to secondary school in my secondary school, I, because I was doing very well in, in primary school, so I got to secondary school. My first year in secondary school was not so good, so I felt so bad that if I, if I used to be first and second in, in primary school, why should I get to university and was not doing well? And also, with the poverty that I was experiencing, something told me that, uh, Education, good education will help me. I didn't know what was telling me that. So I was very keen in studying. Uh, because of the level of poverty, my, 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 my father could not afford textbooks. So I, I would borrow my friend's textbook so that I would read them overnight or read them, stay back in school, read their textbook. And, read, and take them home. I will take them home and read overnight so that I can return it the following day. So that was how I helped myself in secondary school. 
notwithstanding, I will still have to, after school, I have to sell one thing or the other, follow my father to do some gardener work. <laughs> so it was a very difficult life. But I made a decision in my mind that this will not be the life I will, do, I will continue. So I was very focused on my education. Fortunately, I, I started doing well in GS2, which was I said that GSS started. So they move up from class one to GS2, GS3. So I got to SS1. I, I was in science class, so I did science. I will borrow a Babio, borrow physics textbooks, and then I will use that to study. Fortunately, I had a company of a good friend. I chose a particular friend uh, that I will tell you that it's good to keep good friendship, good association. Any friendship that will not assist your aspiration is better to excuse yourself from such relationships. So I choose a, I choose a particular friend and um, he will encourage me to read. He, we will read together. So I was doing very well in my secondary school until seven years after the death of um, my mother, my father also died. That was in 1990. That was really devastating. I, I won't say it caught me unawares, but it was really devastating. It was now very glaring that there won't be any parents. At least it's when you have, <laughs> even if you have just one parent, that you'll be able to say that, okay, you will even cry to, to one. Because the man actually lived very selflessly for us. For the first time in my life, and even up to now, I saw the man in serious pain. Pain of creditors wanting to take the TV in the house, being sent out of the house because you could not pay rent. It was a very difficult life. So when he eventually died, it was really devastating. But I told myself, no matter what, even as an orphan, I will be a good example. I want my story to, to tell people that even as an orphan, you can make something out of life. So I struggled to finish my secondary school and I had a very good result, very good result, except that I didn't have English. Fortunately then, I was offered an account clerk work in one of the old banks. Um, so I was taking, that was at the age of 18, I was still 18 when I was given that job. So I took that job seriously, and my determination was to get to the peak of whatever I lay my hands to do. So I need my first salary at the age of 18. I refused to join any friendship that would not support my aspiration and ambition. And um, along the line, I was not privileged to go to any full-time university, higher institution. But I give glory to God as I speak to you now. Um, academically, I have my bachelor's degree in banking and finance. I have two masters. I have my MBA as master's in business administration and also master's of philosophy in business administration. And that is why to today, I can also tell you that I have my Doctor of Philosophy in Business Administration. Apart from that, I have a lot of professional qualifications. Uh, one of note 
is how I became a chartered accountant. It was a very difficult time for me. I moved from Oyo State, a place called Shaki in Nigeria, uh, to Lagos State in Nigeria. Uh, Lagos State is a metropolitan city, so it was a real struggle for me. I don't want to bore you with how I lived <laughs> to the extent that I was staying in, I was cutting, I was just cutting anywhere. I scored in a private ward. I scored in a room with two other friends. And then I was staying in the primary school to have my ICANN um, lectures and exams. I was staying in that primary school for a long time until I qualified as a chartered accountant. And then I was moved. I was given a triple promotion in my workplace after I qualified. Uh, that was an encouragement to me. So immediately I qualified as a chartered accountant. I was not only promoted, given a triple pro pro promotion. I got another offer from another bank that, that I did not apply for. So I was quickly moved from Lagos back to the head office of that bank in Ibadan, uh, Oyo State, Nigeria. So that gave me um, more encouragement to aspire for whatever I want to do. So I thought within myself after being a chartered accountant that what, what would differentiate me from other chartered accountants? And uh, I, I browsed and I saw that information technology is one of the weakest points of the chartered accountant. And I decided that that is the area that I will focus on. So I pursued um, the professional exams to become a certified information systems auditor. Um, shortly after that, there was consolidation of banks in Nigeria that happened between 2004 to 2006. So I was f fortunate to, to move from uh, that head office to the head office of the new bank, uh, which then was Kai Bank. And I was made the head of information systems audit because I was a chartered accountant, I was a graduate, and I was a certified information systems auditor. Today, by the grace of God, I'm not only a certified information systems auditor, I'm also certified in governance of enterprise IT. I'm also certified in risk and information systems control. So that was why after my work in Skybank, I moved to Union Bank as the head of IT and e-business control. Currently, I had the I had the internal audit of FBN Holdings, that is the parent company of First Bank of Nigeria and its subsidiaries, FBN Quest businesses, FBN Quest Merchant Bank, FBN Quest Capital, and other businesses. I'm responsible for good coordination of internal audit. So I I see my dreams coming true uh, because. There is one major factor which I will not forget. Shortly after moving to my first job, a year after I gave my life to Christ, it changed the direction of my life. And November 17, 1993, was when I gave my life to Christ. And from then, I got to know how Holy Spirit directs one's life because I learned that the best way to use whatever is manufactured is to interact with the manufacturer. So I gave my life to Christ. I made him the bishop of my life. And he was the one giving me the direction of what to do or what not to do. Uh, the association to, to keep and the one not to keep. It, it was a good, it was a factor in my life, a very big factor in my life, which I will enjoy every youngster to do because apart from your aspiration and ambitions it's also important for you to get in touch with your roots with your source and that was why my giving my uh, gi giving my life to christ changed everything in my life gave me a different direction and uh, anytime 
anytime I felt um, or I would be anytime I, I, I was having any emotional challenge I talked to him and today by the grace of God I draw a lot of inspiration from the Word of God and the motto that I use uh, will always be Romans chapter 12 verse 11 that says no slaughtering business vivant in spirit serving the Lord it means that whatever business you find yourself as a stu student you should not be lazy you should not be slothful I saw myself keeping late nights studying hard ensuring that anything that I think I should know I in fact that is what drew me to PhD program that I should know to the end of this thing so not slothful in business means that whatever you are doing don't be lazy um, a little sleep a little slumber the Bible says that poverty will attack you like a thief so not slothful in business and vivant in spirit being vivant in spirit means there must be indwell of the of the Spirit of God in you after you have given your life to Christ and that is what I've been giving me directions and uh, I will enjoy every youngsters to take their studies their business seriously and relationship with God seriously especially the third one in that verse says serving the Lord because that it is a service that will give us reward after now so being orphaned is not a limitation and that is what I've been able to encourage people that if you have father if you have mother if you have anyone caring for for you you should appreciate it as the gift of God but if they are not there they are not the reason for your failure nobody will say by the grace of God that I raised body it is God sending helping hand one way or the other to me and because most of them see my passion my readiness to do things so help will come so if you don't have anyone to help you or your parents are not well to do that should not be the reason for you not to live a good life that is not the, the reason why you cannot achieve your aspiration i didn't have <laughs> i didn't have anyone to tell my aspirations and ambitions yet i got this far by the grace of god i will i will say that passion focus determination perseverance they are key to achieving your aspiration and it's also good to see cancels you need a mentor in whatever you need to do i chose mentors at different levels of my life and from different people to ensure that any aspiration i have i choose somebody that have been there and then i will get guidance from that individual and more importantly holy spirit is a major is a major counselor and i will advise everyone to consider this and not choose any limitation for themselves in the way of their aspiration i give glory to god for helping me thus far being conferred with the doctor of philosophy in biz admin specializing in strategic ma management is a big deal to me and being a fellow of the institute of chartered accountant of nigeria is a big deal to me and many other professional qualifications that i have i give glory to god for my family i raise uh, i'm happily married i'm a man of one wife blessed with three children three brilliant children and i give glory to god if you think um, things will will flow naturally no there are obstacles all the way that is why you need determination i was to defend my thesis on june 25th 2021 which was on a monday 
So I prepared my stuff, ready to come to school. So as I was dressing up, I raised my, my left leg to wear my trouser and I had a crack, loud crack on my lower back. I knew what it was. I knew that that was a sleep disc. I knew that that is excruciating pain because I've had it before October 15, 2010. I knew immediately that I will have to be conferred, I will have to be restricted to bed for not less than five weeks, if not up to three months, and see me wanting to defend my thesis, the very last part of my aspiration. I cried to God. I said, God of grace, have mercy on me. Wherever this attack is coming from, just have mercy and your grace. So I decided right there and then I will still go to school. I will have given that as an excuse to the school to say that I'm not feeling fine. And then they will wait until I'm, I'm fine. So that means I wouldn't have graduated with this class. And I wouldn't have known what would have happened that would have even obstructed it further. But I decided that I would go. And I came to school. I packed myself, supported myself, and I came to school. And I told two people that I didn't want anyone to know about it. I wanted to defend my thesis purely on merit, not on pity that I, I, that I was having any medical challenge. And I got the cooperation of the school authority, the, the head of department, that he won't mention it. He won't mention it at all. Uh, so I defended my thesis in excruciating pain because any drug I take that will reduce the pain, most of the drugs will make me drowsy. So I decided to bear the pain, make my presentation, got the, the good comment from the external and internal examiner. I was declared as doctor of philosophy in biz admin in strategic ma ma management. That was when they got to know that that man was in pain. So I had to leave immediately and landed in the hospital and bed rest for several weeks. So this is telling us that when you meet with obstacles on the way to your um, to your aspiration or, or ambition, it is not enough to use that as an excuse to say that, oh, I will have achieved it, only this problem that I have. But it's telling you that even a river that is flowing, if it meets with obstacle, you will find other way to continue flowing. So that is what any determined person should do. Be determined to find other ways of achieving it rather than the ways of not achieving it. You should find other good ways. For every problem, there is a solution. There is a solution may be remote. It takes determined mind, somebody with passion and focused mind, to be able to get the solution. And that is what will take you to your aspiration. I, I mean, many people were shocked to hear that I wasn't fine. And yet, I still delivered my duty as the president of Aquila graduating class of 2021. Very few people knew about my infirmity. But I give glory to God that it is just a way to tell me that I'm still a woman being. I'm not God. And in it, according to his word, he says, my grace is sufficient for you and my strength is made perfect in your weakness. So even in my weakness, I receive his strength. That uh, a young man, that youth can, can, can fall, youth can fail, but those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. They shall run and they will not be weary. It's, it's just telling us that you should be ready to give what it takes to achieve what you want. Then people will celebrate you. Um, 
I, I learned that a champion is not celebrated. A, a champion did not become a champion on the ring. A champion is a champion behind that, before that ring. When he was walking tirelessly, practicing day and night, doing waking up very, very early, but he was only declared as champion on that ring when he, fit, when he beat his opponent. So that is what it is for us. Not everybody needs to know the pains you go through. Not everybody needs to know um, what you put in to achieve what you want to achieve. For me, <laughs> I have lost normal pattern of sleep. But I knew I would recover from it. It was just a, a, I mean, a price to pay. I've lost the, the normal social life. But it is just a price to pay. So you don't have, if you think you have social activities and you think you must fulfill all those social activities, I'm sorry, they may not help your other aspirations. But by the time you achieve what you want to achieve, you will make up for all other social activities. And even those people will appreciate you more uh, than you attending all social activities and then they will come back to rescue you from your mess. That is my advice.